Hi all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guide for APT where we continue our dive into APT settings looking at the CCD tab. Let's get on to it. The CCD tab in your settings controls the base settings for your CCD or CMOS camera. Uh, the first part we have up here, these three at the top here, all deal with using a one-shot color camera um, and basically these settings are the same as the ones you can use when you connect your camera the first time where you can select if you want a color fits preview or not. If you have that enabled when you connect your camera, uh, these will be automatically set. Um, I don't use a one-shot color very often and the simulator ones are mono camera anyway so I generally leave these unchecked but if you want to use a color fits preview rather than a mono one um, simply click on the color fits preview it automatically picks to store the Bayer pattern in the image and you need to select the correct Bayer pattern to match your camera so you'll have to check your documentation generally it will be RGGB but there are some cameras that will be different, especially CCD ones may be quite different. And of course, uh, if you're just using a mono camera or you want to just do a mono preview, uh, simply click that off and you'll be right. Um, this allows you, with this particular setting with the store Bayer pattern set, it allows you to have the mono preview but still store the Bayer pattern. But if you're using a, monogram ca a monochrome camera, you need to disable the store Bayer pattern. Otherwise, what happens is your file is stored with the Bayer pattern. When you go to do your post-processing, it will be treated as if it's an RGB uh, image, and it will have three channels, etc. And getting and having to convert them all back to monochrome is quite a pain in the butt. So, monochrome cameras, please make sure this is not enabled. Um, this is one reason it's recommended to have a separate profile for your color and your monochrome cameras so that you don't get them mixed up. Next up is the uh, location in your FITS header. Um, with this enabled, you can hide the location from the FITS header. Um, personal choice, and it depends on if you're going to be actually sharing your FITS files or not. Uh, so people don't know exactly where you are, um, you can hide your location that one. Auto Connect CCD camera, um, generally you'll want this so when you start the CCD camera is connected automatically, that's all that one is. Now if you happen to be having any problems with your camera once connected, you might want to set the higher CCD compatibility and see if that helps. Uh, it just adds a few extra tweaks that um, help some cameras, you may or may not need that. Uh, disable minimum exposure check. Now this is some drivers report a higher minimum exposure than the camera is actually capable of and that sometimes prevents getting uh, really short um, flats and that to get done. So you might need to check this. Um, I've never had a need to with my cameras but your mileage may vary. So you may want to check that if you can't get really fast exposures for your flats. Uh, auto populate the CCD profile and basically that's your tools tab and it will auto automatically fill in the uh, pixel size and the sensor size down the bottom for you which is generally good to have. Uh, remember binning, uh, this is for your camera tab here down the bottom, uh, do you want it to remember what the binning was the last time you used it so between sessions it will store the binning if you wish it to and same with the gain, uh, it will store the gain you have set down here and uh, restore it when you start a new session. Manage gain, uh, you probably want this turned on and that allows uh, APT to change the gain as required uh, with your settings. The probably the most important ones if you're using a filter wheel and you have different gain settings for uh, various filters or various features, you may want to have that enabled. Pardon me. Um, so you can uh, let APT work with the gain. So I'd leave that enabled. Now your advanced CCD settings, you should not need to go into these. Um, they're things that uh, you won't need to change unless you're having real problems or you know what you're doing. Um, especially the B0 fits. Um, disable fits auto orientation, that can be done. 
uh, include row order. Um, this is a fairly new one and some programs don't handle it properly so you probably won't want that and if you're having problems with your QHRA Y for live view uh, there's a fix for that in there so but generally you won't touch these at all so I'd leave them alone unless you really know what you're doing okay over to the other side um, this is your debayering if you're using a um, color fits preview it's a scaling of your red and blue channels uh, in comparison to your green channel green channels one uh, setting of one which means there's no scaling and you can change the scaling it just changes how the appearance of your uh, preview looks and it's up to you what you do with that one just to make it look good um, pardon me but when you change these and save them you have to reload the image to get the result um, CCD auto stretch factor and this is how much it stretches the image when you use auto stretch as simple as that uh, the CCD binning limit some CCD cameras have extremely high binning modes that they can run in um, which can create problems especially if you're using your your live view automation or whatever uh, you may want to restrict that down to you know a more reasonable level and that's what you do in there and the cooling delta this is how close to the temperature you set for your cooling the uh, camera sensor needs to be to be considered at that temperature uh, 0.6 is the default and it works fine for most cameras um, you're unlikely to need to go lower uh, but on some camera cameras you may need to go a little bit higher so that's you know you'll have to work with that but 0.6 works fine so as long as the temperature is within 0.6 it will be considered cooled um, stop the initial CCD auto cooling uh, this is advisable to have enabled and um, you're better off disabling that and then using cooling aid to cool your camera in steps uh, the default cooling will just try and cool your camera straight down to whatever you have set in your driver and that can cause issues with condensation uh, so it's better off to use cooling aid and do it in steps uh, pause cooling during image read some cameras require this I believe there's some s big ones that might need it uh, just to get a cleaner signal from your sensor while you're uh, when you read from the sensor for your image uh, open cooling aid on camera connection uh, this is a handy one if you want to basically when you connect your camera cooling aid opens and is ready to go it's a good way to be reminded to uh, cool your camera before you start imaging uh, Use, a, use the external sensor for the warming aid and this just gives you an offset allows you to set an offset based on the temperature you're getting from a sensor if you have one enabled um, if you have a focuser you probably have a temperature probe or, or whatever and this sets you a uh, allows you to use that temperature to automatically set the target temperature in warming aid and that warming aid target offset five to ten degrees is fine it won't hurt your camera if you know you're ten degrees below the ambient or whatever um, it just gives you a, a let's a, automatically set the target level for warming um, check cam, camera temperature on plan start I keep this one checked um, simply because you want to make sure your cameras down to temperature before you start using the uh, doing a plan uh, that's all that does and then you can set the temperature of what you require it to be so if you're operating at uh, you want to go at minus 10 you might set this to minus 9 so as long as the camera's at least minus 9 you won't have any problems if it's not it pops up a warning and tells you it's not at the temperature do you want to continue and then you can name the camera uh, whatever you like rather than um, using the default one reported by the driver but that's up to you whether that one you use or not and you can reset the image IDs for the camera so that's nothing really but that's uh, something you can do if you wish and that's it for the uh, CCD CMOS or the CCD tab uh, I hope you found it useful and I will see you in the next video clear skies all